Nmap is an essential tool for cybersecurity and IT professionals. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Nmap as an ethical hacker. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I'm a cybersecurity professional, more specifically a penetration tester. I have six years of experience in the field and I also have 11 certifications and a Bachelor of Science in cybersecurity. Before we get started, go ahead and like the video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. Nmap lets you discover devices on a network as well as discover services that are running on those devices. Nmap, which is short for Network Mapper, is a tool that quite literally helps you map out a network. And with the Nmap scripting engine, you can even use it to find vulnerabilities. If you go to my GitHub Nmap notes, you'll notice that there is a lot that goes into Nmap and there's a many different options that you can do. In this video, we're not going to cover every single aspect of Nmap. We're only going to talk about the things that actually matter and things that I use every single day. This demo is for educational purposes only. Ethical hacking is legal and differs from illegal hacking. Always ensure you have legal permission before performing what you see in this demo. The easiest way to get started with Nmap right away is by doing the simplest command, Nmap, and then the IP address of the target that we want to scan, and push enter. And with most Windows machines, and even some Linux machines, you'll get this notice. Note, host seems down. If it is really up but blocking our ping probes, try dash pn. So the reason why this is happening is because Windows machines by default block ping requests. So to get around this, as it says, we just gotta do a dash, capital P, lowercase n. And remember, with Nmap, as well as a lot of other commands, capitalization in Linux matters. Let's go ahead and hit up arrow key, and then we'll do a dash, capital P, lowercase n, and push enter on this. And this Nmap scan took 17.61 seconds. Most Nmap scans do take a while, so if it is taking a while to scan your network, that is perfectly normal. And you can see we have our results. So it's, it's divided into three different categories. We have the ports, we have the state, and the service. So by default, it only shows us the open ports, which is really usually all we're interested in anyway, so that's good that it does that. And you can see we have port 21 open, port 22 open, 139, and 445. And they're all TCP. And you can see they're all open. And then we have the service that's running. When it comes to the service that is running, this doesn't mean that FTP is for sure running. This doesn't mean SSH is for sure running. It's taking a guess because it's going off the well-known port. So for example, 21 is the well-known port for FTP. So Nmap just assumes that it's FTP. However, that does not mean it's FTP. Same thing with SSH. It's assuming that port 22 being open means it's running SSH. That is a guess. That's typically what you'll find. However, that is not always the case. Now, when we run this command, Nmap and then the IP address, what are we actually doing? So what it's doing is scanning the top 1000 most commonly used ports. So this is not a full scan which is one of the reasons why it went by so fast. So usually you do want to scan, do a complete scan after you do an initial scan. And a lot of times I do skip this initial scan just because I like to know the full picture. In order to do a full scan, we would do Nmap, and then we would do dash P dash, which means all ports. We can also do one through 65,535. However, that takes more keystrokes and it's just easier to do dash P dash which you'll often see me do that. We can specify ports by doing something like this. So you can see we can do dash P. If we want to scan just port 22, we would do 22. If we wanted to scan more than one port, we could do 139, comma, 445. But in this situation, we're gonna scan all ports because that's typically what I like to do when I'm in the initial discovery phase of a network penetration test or a capture the flag. And then I like to do dash S, capital S, which stands for SIN scan, also known as a stealth scan. I'll explain that in just a moment. And then what I like to do dash capital T4. So what T4 is, is we're bumping the speed up by a little bit. So by default, if you don't specify a dash T option, Nmap runs at dash T3. So when you do dash T4, you're increasing the speed slightly. It goes all the way up to T5, and you can even slow it down to dash T1 or dash T2. The reason why I don't like to do dash T5 is because it's so fast that it will miss ports and it's a little unreliable. So I usually don't like to do dash T5 and I almost always go with a dash T4 because dash T4 hasn't missed a port on me that I know of yet. So dash T4 is increased speed, but still very reliable, which is why I use it. And then we throw on our dash PN 
and then our IP address. And then before we even do all that, we have to have root or sudo permissions. So we would do a sudo in front of that and then type in our password. And the reason why you need root slash sudo permissions is because we're doing that sin stealth scan. And I'm gonna explain it here in just a minute, but you have to have elevated privileges in order to do that scan type. While that scan is running, let me talk about why you would use the sin scan and what it actually does. This information is coming from the in-map basic port scans room on TryHackMe. So here's a diagram of what's actually happening when you do a SYN scan. So our computer here on the left sends a SYN, the target machine sends a SYN ACK, and then we send a reset rather than a ACK. So a typical 3 handshake is SYN, SYN ACK, and ACK, and that completes the full connection. However, with a SYN scan, we don't send an ACK, we're sending a reset, which is why it's called a SYN scan compared to a full connection scan or a TCP scan. SYN scan does not need to complete the three-way handshake, instead it tears down the connection once it receives a response from the server. Because we didn't establish a TCP connection, this decreases the chances of the scan being low. Now I kind of disagree with this right here, this decreases the chances of the scan being logged. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of products nowadays that specifically look for SYN scans. Because InMap, as it says right here, by default is a SYN scan. So if you are the root user and you do InMap and then scan, you are doing a SYN scan. However, in the previous scan that we did, we did not do a SYN scan because we were not the root user and we didn't put sudo in front of it. But if you were the root user or you put sudo in front of InMap, you would indeed be doing a SYN scan by default. So you may be wondering why you would even do a dash lowercase s capital S. Technically, you don't need to do dash lowercase s capital S to do a SYN scan. I just like to do it because I like to ensure that yes, I am doing a SYN scan. If you have a Wireshark capture, as you see here in this try hacking room, when you send reset flags, these light up red, which is honestly very noticeable. Modern cybersecurity, I wouldn't call a SYN scan a stealth scan because it lights Wireshark up pretty well and a lot of detection tools specifically are looking for that reset flag and it's an indicator of a network scan being conducted and that is a good way to get an advanced notice that an attacker is scoping out your network. And the reason why I like to specify a SYN scan is because it's actually faster because we're not making a full connection, it's making a half connection. So because we're making a half connection, we actually increase our speed by a little bit, which is why I specify SYN scan when I do my first initial scan on all 65,535 ports. And as you see, our scan just finished. It took significantly longer at 219 seconds. And we also found another port, 3632. And spoiler alert, 3632 is actually where the vulnerability was. So if we didn't do the full 65,535 port scan, then we never would have found this vulnerability. So that's why it's important to almost always do a full scan instead of just a 1000 top ports. So this scan is really only good for showing us what ports are open. There's another scan that we can do that's going to tell us information about each port that is open. And this is where it gets a little more in depth, but this is very critical. So it starts off the same sudo in map. And then I'm going to specify dash lowercase t s capital T for a full connection scan. And the reason why we're doing a full connection scan here is because we want more information from the target machine. And then I like to do dash capital A and dash capital A is actually dash capital O, dash capital lowercase s, capital V, and dash lowercase s, capital C, and a dash dash trace route. Now I'm not interested in the dash dash trace route because our target's not responding to pings anyway. However, even though dash A means dash O, sv and dash sc i still specify these and the reason is because you actually get more information if you specify all of them so it's very strange dash a should give you the same information but it doesn't so that's a little fun fact about nmap so what does these other flags mean dash capital o means operating system detection so this is just going to tell us the operating system at least nmap takes a good guess at what the operating system could be dash lowercase s capital v stands for service version so so this is going to make an attempt to try to get the service version of each service that's running on the target. You don't always get the service version numbers, but if you do, that comes in handy quite a bit. Lowercase s, capital C, is the most common 
scripts in the in-map scripting engine and it's very critical that you do this because you do find out way more information about the target if you throw in a dash sc and then i like to do a dash dash script vuln and the reason why i do a dash dash script vuln is because this is the vulnerability script and it'll actually tell us some vulnerabilities maybe so sometimes it shows us vulnerabilities that aren't actual true vulnerabilities so there are false positives with this however it can show you legitimate vulnerabilities so i always recommend throwing on a dash s script because the dash s script vuln isn't one of the scripts that's ran when you do dash s capital c and then we want to do our dash capital pn because our target doesn't respond to pings and since it's not responding to pings we're, we're just skipping that and then we're going to do dash p and then we want to specify all the ports that we found so we found 21 we found 22 we found 139 we found 445 and we found 36 32 and then we want to do our ip address and right here is the full command and this scan is going to take an incredibly long time because we are doing a very intense scan on these five ports so once you send this scan you're going to want to go do something else go take a break go look at something else on the target because this scan is going to complete for quite a bit of time scan actually took a lot less time than I thought it was going to, only 175 seconds, but we'll see that we have a ton of information here. So it will start off with port 21. As you can see here, with due to that dash s script phone, it's actually pointing out exploitable vulnerabilities right off the rip. Now, when you see exploit like this, it doesn't always mean that you can actually exploit it. There's just a very good chance that you are able to exploit it. Wasn't able to exploit this vulnerability. Uh, I didn't actually try that hard because eventually, I went over to, to this vulnerability on port 3632 and as you can see here we have CVE 2004-2687 and it says vulnerable, exploitable and that was what I used to actually break into this particular system. Remember we didn't get 3632 unless we scanned for all 65,535 ports because 3632 isn't a top 1000 most common port. It's critical that you actually throw in all these extra things on in map because you do get a lot more information about the target as you can see look, look at all these vulnerabilities that are popping up here that we can um, start trying some of these might work most of these probably won't um, in my experience there are a lot of false positives with this but a lot of the times you do get one that works in this case this one actually did work for me yeah that's pretty much it i mean these two scans right here this one in this one oftentimes are the only two scans that i do in engagements so i've gotten a lot of success out of these just these two scans alone i do recommend playing around with these flags and using them how i use them in this video I said earlier in the video there are a lot of other options with nmap and if you're trying to do more, way more in-depth stuff you might want to throw those in there but for the most part these are the these are my bread and butter when it comes to nmap and if this far in the video you're clearly someone who wants to learn more about cybersecurity tools so I applaud you and I respect you for that. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I got a lot more videos on the way. We're gonna be showcasing a lot more tools on this channel, so stay tuned for that.